Hello friends, welcome to e Parchala. I am Shagun Sharma, Assistant Professor in Political Science in Government College for Girls, Sector 42, Chandigarh. The paper is Foreign Policy of India and module is India-Nepal Relations. India and Nepal share a deep historical roots and understanding with each other. Nepal and India, they also are deeply engaged in religious and cultural spheres. Moreover, the 1700 kilometers open border between India and Nepal is a striking example of trust and similarities with each other. India and Nepal had some kind of initial hitches with each other because of Nepal's closeness with China but gradually both countries understand that they both need each other for their mutual understanding and security. Nepal has a very interesting strategic position in the South Asian continent. So it also acts as a buffer state. So it is in India's interest to keep Nepal as a friend. This module will help the students to know the bilateral relations of India and Nepal. Broadly, these two nations have been in good relations with each other, but sometimes relations turned sour due to some acts committed either by Nepal or by India. Through this module, effort has been made to acquaint the readers about all the ups and downs in their relations. Various stages of relations. The proper analysis of India-Nepal relations can be done on the basis of changes which took place during various stages of their relations. Friendly beginning. The beginning of India-Nepal relations was cordial and friendly. Many reasons have been responsible for that kind of relations which are as follows. Until the treaty of friendship comes into existence, India signed the agreement of status quo with Nepal in 1947. It was decided through this agreement that both will follow the treaty concluded in 1923 between British and Nepalese government until or unless new agreement is signed. Both countries signed an agreement regarding the recruitment of Gurkhas in Indian military. It was consented under this trilateral agreement on 9th November 1947 that India will establish 12 Gurkhas battalions according to the traditions of 15th May 1815 continued from the British period. The number of these battalions increased to 23 in 1948 and 39 after 1962. According to an estimate, 37,000 to 45,000 Gurkhas are there in Indian military at present. On the demand of Nepalese Prime Minister, India sent a senior Indian politician Sri Prakash to Nepal in 1947 to prepare a constitution for Nepal. Though this constitution couldn't be executed as it was against the absolute monarchy. Treaty of Peace and Friendship was signed between India and Nepal in July 1950. After the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, India established its military posts on the northern boundary of Nepal to overcome its security threats coming through the passes of Tibet and Bhutan. In 1950, India also played an important role in seizing the regime of Rana in Nepal. After the Treaty of 1950, differences of Rana government with India started. Simultaneously, the civil war, civil war between Rana and King Tribhuvan also started. India safely took out the members of royal family and re-established the rule of Maharaja by terminating the rule of Rana. India recognized Nepal as part of its security system in this period. Nehru gave this kind of statement in the parliament on 15th March 1950 while expressing this kind of worry about security. India also made efforts for membership of Nepal in the UN from time to time. Nepal was included in this international organization as an independent nation in 1955. These reasons clear the three things. First of all, India used to consider Nepal as a part of its security circle. Hence, the worry of India and anxiety about internal democracy can be understood. Second, this was the period of mutual cooperation and friendship between India and Nepal. Hence, India constructed a dam on Kosi River with the cost of Rs 37 crores, which provided Nepal the facilities of free electricity and irrigation. India also sent some technical experts to Nepal to provide military training. King of Nepal also paid a courtesy visit to India in November 1955. 
Third, Nepal became the member of UN only through the efforts of India. In the same period, along with friendship, the confusion was propagated in the public that India is interfering in the internal affairs of Nepal. Due to the same reasons, the black badges were shown by some people as resentment when a courtesy delegation of India reached Nepal. But in conclusion, we can say that up to 1955, the relations of both the countries were sound and the policies of India in this regard have been converted from carelessness to taking interest. Now, India was adopting the policies of exerting the maximum influence so that there may not be any danger to India's security. Period of change. The second stage of India-Nepal relations has been from 1956 to 1962 in which the changed nature of their relations was noticed. The most important change in this period was the attraction of Nepal towards China. India tried to reduce it through its various economic and cultural policies but couldn't succeed much in this direction. The contemporary position of both the countries was responsible for this change. India was responsible in this context because some policies of its first stage were of dominating nature in context of Nepal. Simultaneously, Indo-China Trade Treaty of 1954 through which the dominance of China on Tibet was accepted put the Nepal in a confused situation. On the other side, the slight change was observed in the position of Nepal after getting the membership of UN in 1955. As a result, the attraction of Nepal towards China was clearly observed. At this time, the closeness to China means the distance from India. The reasons of in Nepal's deep relations with China are clear from the following incident. The Prime Minister of Nepal visited China in 1956. A friendship treaty was signed between China and Nepal on 20th September 1956. Prime Minister of China Chao Wenlai visited Nepal in 1957. China and Nepal signed a boundary agreement on 5th October 1961. Nepal did not take any advice from India in this regard while Burma took the advice of India in the similar treaty. On the basis of Nepal-China agreement of 16th October 1961, China provided economic support to Nepal for construction of a road from Lhasa to Kathmandu. Keeping in view its security, it was obvious for India to have suspicion from increasing relations of China and Nepal through this kind of agreement. Along with the increasing friendship of China and Nepal, India got a setback when King Mahindra dismissed the elected government of B.P. Koirala on 15th December 1960. It caused an end to the democratic system established in Nepal through the efforts of India. Though Nehru visited Nepal during this problem in June 1959 and in response, Prime Minister of Nepal V.P. Koirala also visited India in November 1959. King Mahindra also visited India in April 1962, but no change was visualized between the relations. India was also unable to take strong step at this time when Nepal was using the China card. The most troublesome situation for India was when it was published in a booklet in Nepal before King Mahindra's visit to China in December 1961 that China is the most liberal and provides selfless support. Not even so, Nepal adopted the complete neutral policy during Indochina war and not criticized the act of China in any way. Hence, in this era where Nepal has adopted the approach of closeness towards China on one side, India tried for better relations in future by adopting the take-it-easy approach towards Nepal on the other side. Beginning of new approach The period from 1963 to 1971 can be called the third round of India-Nepal relations. India became more worried in context of Nepal due to war with China in 1962 and after that the attitude of Nepal about war. Hence, India started a new approach with Nepal and adopted more sensitive approach. It tried to provide a wider help in the economic and cultural fields also. The clear picture of this new approach can be visualized through the visits of Indian leaders in this period. Though Nepalese leaders also visited in response, but India took this more important region seriously only after the China war. The visits by the leaders of both the countries are the clear indications of this. Lal Bahadur Shastri as Home Minister and again as Prime Minister, Dr. Radhakrishnan as President, Swan Singh as Foreign Minister, Indira Gandhi as Prime Minister, 
Murarji Desai as Deputy Prime Minister, Zakir Hussain as President, Dinesh Singh as Foreign Minister, Maharaja Mahindra, Surya Bahadur Thapa as Prime Minister, and Mahindra Bahadur Bhandari as Foreign Minister visited each other's countries. The second important aspect of this new approach was the development of economic, cultural and social relations. Stress on more cooperation and participation was laid on economic relations rather than assistance given in earlier times so that Nepal can establish the relations with India at equal pace. Under this new approach, both countries signed various economic agreements. In 1964, India took the decision to construct a 128 miles long road from Kugoli to Oshwara Valley with the cost of 9 crore. India also gave its consent to construct another road from Kathmandu to Raksol. Besides, India completed the Kosi plan on its own expenditure. Under this approach, India did not object on difference from Nepal on any important issue. For example, the attitude of Nepal remained neutral during Indo-Pak War of 1965. India was not happy with this. It adopted the sympathetic and cooperative attitude rather than tough attitude towards Nepal. It does not mean that Nepal also taken new initiative to establish cordial relations. Contrary to this, differences remained there between the two on three, four issues. These issues were as follows. The Foreign Minister of Nepal raised some objections on Susta region and Kosi Canal scheme during his visit in 1969. However, India offered to solve these matters through mutual talks but relations remained tense. In June 1969, perhaps on the advice of China, Nepal asked India to call back coordination group and technical officers of its military deputed on posts of Nepal-China border. During the same period, Nepal started to raise objections on India-Nepal Friendship Treaty of 1950. The tension between both the countries started to develop since 1970 on the Treaty of Trade and Exchange. Relations remained cordial even after the above hurdle. One thing is especially important about these disputes that China was a strategic challenge for India and it never wished that Nepal attacks towards China. But on the other side, China is a compulsion for Nepal. Besides, keeping in view the situation of Nepal as a buffer state, India kept on maintaining the normal relations with Nepal even after the above differences. Normal relations but with differences. The period from 1972 to 1979 is called the fourth round of relations between both the countries. Relations remained normal during this period, but some differences also remained on declaration of peace zone. During this period, main changes took place due to the internal and external interferences in South Asia. In the beginning itself, three events happened in the way that their positive impact has been successful to, to bring both the countries closer. The most important change was the India-Soviet Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation of 1971. After that, Indo-Pak War and birth of Bangladesh have been important incidents. In the same series, after the Emperor Mahendra, King Birendra was to be appointed as the Emperor of Nepal in 1972, who was liberal by nature. These incidents made India's position strong in this region on the one side, and Nepal also established its close relations with India on the other side by changing its contrary attitude. The Prime Minister of both the countries, K. N. Bisht and Indira Gandhi, visited to each other's countries. Both countries signed agreements for cooperation in the fields of irrigation, electricity, communication, industry and agriculture to improve their relations in 1974. But at the same time, Nepal got worried on the accession of Sikkim in India in 1975. Having noticed the quick reaction of Nepal, India assured it that its matter is quite different from Sikkim and Bhutan. Even after Nepal remained tough on this, then India said to Nepal that it is not capable to provide it oil and petrol on quota basis from 1st January 1975. After that, Nepal adopted the normal attitude. Consequently, Prime Minister of Nepal N.P. Rizal and Maharaja Birendra visited India. Indian Foreign Minister Y.B. Chavan also visited Nepal. Later on, Prime Minister of Nepal, Tulsi Giri, mentioned the disputed principle of equal distance during his visit to India in April 1976. 
The main aim of India's foreign policy under the Janata Party government in 1977 has been to develop the cordial relations with the neighbors. During this period mostly one-sided concessions were declared by India. These were as follows. India took the responsibility of developing the industries of Nepal. Instead of one, two different treaties of trade and exchange were signed in 1970. Custom duty was removed from about 60 goods made in Nepal. Regular supply of 16 essential goods was was assured to Nepal. Under the transit treaty Nepal was given exemption to take goods by road up to Bangladesh. Nepal was provided with all the facilities of a landlocked state according to this treaty. For the development of good relations Indian Prime Minister and for many times the foreign ministers visited Nepal and the king of Nepal also visited in response. The most controversial issue of this period has been the declaration of Nepal as peace zone. This issue still creates suspicion in India Nepal relations. First of all this issue was discussed by Maharaja Birender during the summit of non aligned countries at Algeria in September 1973. But it was propagated in real sense during the coronation speech of Maharaja in February 1975. Nepal has two bases in this context. First, Nepal is a landlocked country geographically and second, its economy is backward than those of third world countries. But India opposes this declaration at three bases. The declaration of peace zone will destroy the special relations of India and Nepal, hence India cannot support the declaration which affects its security in northern region. It is of no use because of the treaty of friendship and cooperation between India and Nepal it does not leave any special importance from the view point of india china relations india thought that keeping in view the geo strategic system the position of china nepal and india nepal cannot be evaluated on equal footing india doesn't consider the legitimacy of this activity of nepal even in the period when there is an improvement in india nepal relations Nepal has produced a seven point explanation also in this context which is as follows Nepal will always follow the policy of peace non alignment and peaceful coexistence simultaneously it will develop the relations with all the nations of the world particularly with the neighbors on the basis of mutual sovereignty and freedom Nepal will not use power against peace and security of any nation Nepal will stress on the peaceful solution of dispute of its own and others Nepal will not interfere in the internal affairs of any other country. Nepal will not allow any hostile activity against the supporters or opponents of this declaration. It will respect all the treaties signed by it until or unless there are well these are valid. Nepal will not form any military alliance with any country nor it will allow establishing military bases and it would like if other nations follow the similar policies. A large part of UN has granted recognition to this declaration of Nepal. Some experts believe that India should also think on this line. Nepal has made this kind of appeal to India also in the decade of 1980. Nepal is under some psychological compulsions in this context. Hence both have to take any positive decision in this regard in the changing world order from the angle of removing the contradictions between the leadership of both the countries. During this period definitely there has been a tension between both the both on the incident of Sikkim accession and declaration of peace zone as a whole there was no hatred and conflicted relations during this period there was an important exchange between india and nepal on trade matters and economic cooperations and the relations of both got more matured Two important incidents happened in the last years of 1970s which affected the southern the south asian relations of india and nepal positively First Maharaja Birendra planned to conduct a national referendum in Nepal through which people will be provided opportunity to choose their system Through this a process of reinstating the democracy started there for which india has always supported This was a good message for indo nepal relations Second, Soviet Union interfered in Afghanistan in 1979. India and Nepal were unanimous on this matter that this problem could should be solved through political means rather than military means. Both were of the opinion that for the security and stability of this region, foreign 
forces should go back and there should be no intervention in internal affairs of a country by external powers both countries express their consent to take help in economic field and to take steps to dispose of all the beneficial plans rapidly the differences started to increase between both in the last years of 1980s sometime this situation reached even on the peak of sensations Beside the declaration of already disputed peace zone, four new issues reached up to the level of conflict from the level of differences. These disputed issues were import of weapons by Nepal, execution of the permit system, problem of citizenship, and dispute on trade and transit treaty. Maharaja Birendra purchased the weapons from China in large quantity in 1980 which reached Nepal in 1982 via Kathmandu Kodari road The estimated quanti quantity of these weapons was from 300 to 500 trucks which included anti aircraft guns medium range missiles AK59 rifles etc In Indian opinion this was the violation of treaty of 1950 and India criticized Nepal for its bad intention for the a uh, possible use of these weapons against india at the same time nepal started the permit system on 1 lakh 50000 indians working in nepal while about 35 lakh nepalese have freedom to work in india the problem of citizenship also surfaced during this period the officials of nepal have started to tease the indian workers who could not get the certificates of citizenship due to the lack of certificates these people were facing the problems in sale and purchase of the properties and getting the jobs while contrary to this nepalese residing in india were not facing any such kind of problem the important then above three problem was the termination of trade and transit treaty between both the countries This agreement got cancelled on 23rd March 1989 and because both of them did not execute it again as a result India closed its all 16 posts except two situated for exchange at India Nepal border A question mark was put on the relations of both due to above differences now Nepal was repeatedly asking for the ban on peace and friendship treaty of 1950 but this situation changed swiftly As a result of elections in 1989 the government of Rajiv Gandhi collapsed and BP Singh government came into power On the other side in Nepal the partyless democracy ended in April 1990 after 30 years and the Congress government of GD Koirala was formed Both the governments tried to improve relations Nepal also improved patient in using the China card Consequently on 10th June 1990 an agreement to observe status quo of 1st January 1987 was made till any final agreement between VP Singh and KP Bhattarai Some doubts emerged about these relations with the arrival of communist party in power in Nepal in 1993 but these doubts proved baseless It Its main reason was that before this time the attitude of communist party has always been opposite to India but it didn't happen now In February 1996 during the visit of Nepalese prime minister Diyuba Dhu a new dimension was added in the relations of both the countries when an agreement was done on the development of Mahakali river Indian Prime Minister Indra Kumar Gujarat also paid visit to Nepal during uh, 5th to 7th June 1997 and signed various agreements of multidimensional nature. The most important agreement was to include the private entrepreneurs in the trade of electricity from Nepal by both the countries. Still there are various issues of differences between the two these are as follows. still both have differences on the issues of kalapani from time to time nepal has been raising the issue of evaluation of boundaries and to change the treaty of friendship and cooperation of 1950 the issue of hiding staying and shelter of anti -ter indian terrorists in nepal has been a matter of severe differences between both the countries india thinks that pakistani intelligence agency isi is running its activities in the tharai and other regions of nepal The hijacking of India's passenger plane IC814 and taking it to Kabul is the strong example of this. 
the issue of misusing the trade treaty of 1991 has also been a matter of india's worries worries of india increased more due to the internal changes political instability terrorist activities of mice after the brutal murder of members of royal families in the beginning of 2001 even after such stability and changes the relations between both the countries remained warm due to the continuation of exchanges between the leaders of both the countries during the visit of nepalese prime minister sher bahadur deoba both the countries expressed their consent not only on terrorism and defense cooperation but also talked to increase cooperation on trade water treatment demarcation and and interpretation of boundaries etc in this context the visit of girija prasad koirala has been very important during this visit government of india expressed its wish to commemorate to cooperate nepal on 10 important points some importance of them are as follows to expedite the basic plans like roads oil pipelines railway connectivity special economic zones etc to increase the nepalese assistance budget from rupees 65 crore to rupees 150 crore for the current financial year etc Uh, beside this cooperation continued during the visits of nepalese prime ministers during these visits uh both the countries along with the economic cooperation expressed their concerns for the production of 1000 megawatt extra energy in the coming next 14 years and to increase the cooperation in economic social and cultural fields beside the construction of damaged bridge at kosi river river even after these differences there are no permanent hurdles between both the countries hope that improvement in relations of both the countries will continue on bilateral basis at the regional level a general consensus emerged among the countries of south asia on the issue of terrorism during a meeting of sarc countries in january 2002 which will influence the bilateral issues of both the countries positively it will end an important point of dispute between india and nepal due to the changes at world level and policies of india towards neighbors full possibilities of cordial relations between both the countries are available rest of the things will depend on incidents of future based on the facts the coming time is also seemed to march towards the cordial relations between both to conclude we can say that india and nepal have always had a uh, good and mutual trust among each other but some differences have likely seen to be after in some phases India and Nepal they need to have the mutual trust and confidence building measures together China is a hitch in Indo Nepal relationship but India needs to keep it in view that it has to take Nepal with itself towards the path of development since Nepal is a kind of buffer state India is deeply investing in Nepal's infrastructure and trade however uh the long border line between in the open borders between india and nepal uh, clearly present the case of mutual trust between each other so india needs to uh have a positive development of relations and friendship with nepal thank you